Hey, honey. Yes, Barry? Let's get out of here. Where are we going? Where do we always go? Hasta encontrar la playa Por eso grito al mundo Yo soy de Puerto Vallarta Samba de Puerto Vallarta Noche de arrullo en el mar Samba de Puerto Vallarta Hello, fellow travelers, and welcome to this episode of the Puerto Vallarta Travel Show. I'm your host, Barry Kessler, and I'm just so happy to be introducing you to my favorite vacation destination. Hey, maybe it's even yours. And if it's not, I'm going to make sure it is one day, and that's Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. That music you're just listening to is performed by Alberto Perez, and Alberto is the owner of the La Palapa Group of Restaurants. Those are the La Palapa, the El Dorado restaurant, and now, at night, for dinner, the El Dorado transforms into the Vista Grill. That's right, that's the Vista Grill that used to be up on the hill, and now it has a new Vista. It's right on the beach where you get the same Vista Grill menu, the fantastic Vista Grill service, and what's best is it's right here on Los Muertos Beach, with a very, very nice view of the Los Muertos Pier. You'll recognize that pier. It's the stunning sail-like structure that's all lit up at night with the beautiful colors. You can enjoy dinner under the stars with your toes in the sand right at the water's edge. It is so romantic, you guys. It is so Puerto Vallarta, my friends. Well, today I have a very special show. But first, let's talk about what's happening in Puerto Vallarta this week. The 27th of June, 2017. The rains have arrived, as I said last week, and this Sunday was a real gully washer. There was a brilliant lightning storm lasting about, mm, I'd say about three hours. I watched some of that storm on the Quatis y Quetis webcam, right from my smartphone, on my webcam page, where you can find it at my website at www.portoviartotravelshow.com. Now, I have to tell you that the camera there at Quatis y Quetis has been a little touch-and-go last week, but I did get a great show on Sunday night on my cell phone. Now, if you guys are planning a trip this summer, you should be aware that it's raining, you guys. There's a, a possibility of rain in the late afternoon until the late evening, and it's not a cold rain. It's a warm downpour, but during the day, it's very unlikely that you're going to see any rain at all. So go ahead, make your plans to go out, sightsee, and all that other good stuff. But remember, we're into the trop- we're in the tropics right now. We're getting into the hot and muggy season, so dress appropriately, as I said. And as I said last week, it seems like things are greening up here in paradise. Last week, we were talking about the distinct possibility of Uber coming to Puerto Vallarta. And guess what, my friends? Mark your calendars, because as of today, Uber is operating in Puerto Vallarta. I just went to the Uber website, and uh, I have a link to it on the show notes for this episode of the show, episode 25. And uh, they are up and running, you guys. Now, last week, we also discussed the opposition of this Uber invasion by the taxi unions, and there's like three or 4,000 taxi drivers here in Puerto Vallarta, so they have vowed to fight this introduction of Uber drivers here in Puerto Vallarta, but it's already happened, you guys. Um, So it's going to be very interesting to see how this all washes out. Now... I asked you last week to give me your taxi stories, uh, your good ones and your bad ones, and I've collected some really good thoughts from you guys. You guys are very thoughtful, and I need to start by saying that I've always liked the taxi service in Puerto Vallarta, 
And when I first heard about Uber, you know, coming to Vallarta, I said to myself, well, why? Why in Vallarta? It'll never work, I thought. But I've gotten input from both sides. So let's see what you all think about these. Now, my friend Dan says that I love those taxis. Hard to think why I would want Uber and PV. Here's my story. First trip to PV, he was staying on the south side, wanted to take his daughter to the zoo. It was 10 in the morning, and he was looking around for an old driver in the car, presuming that he needed the fare most. And anyway, they jump in the cab and drive about a half a block, and he pulls up behind a couple of other taxis, and the driver starts talking to him, and another driver walks back, and after a bit of discussion, they decide that it's the Zoological, Zoological that they wanted to go to. Uh, I guess he was doing some charades of animals, uh, but that didn't help. Anyway, he f- he later that night, we were walking on the Malacan and discovered why he was confused when he saw the zoo nightclub there. So that was a very that was a very positive experience uh, for Dan. Now I have another note from my friend Helen. Now Helen's lived here in Puerto Vallarta for a long time, and here's what she writes. As a full-timer here and fluent in Spanish, what puts me off is that I can never get the same price for the same ride. Have to negotiate all the time, and it's not a question of 20 pesos. It can vary from 60 to 100 pesos from one cab to another. Also, when you're downtown, it's much easier to get a cab at night than when you live in the colonias farther away from the centro. Try to get a cab at 1 in the morning in Versailles is nearly impossible, and when you do, it's very expensive. Some of the cabs are dirty, and some taxistas, when they see you, negotiate the price just to miff you off. Also seen taxis pass by a pregnant Mexican woman to get tourists' customer just down the street. Then I was really miffed, when she saw, okay, then I was really miffed. Okay, good. Welcome Uber, she says. Same price, no discrimination, no hassling. Okay, now there is a local who is welcoming Uber, right? And here is another story from Pat. And Pat says, I spend my winter in PV. My friends visiting from a cruise ship for the day wanted to return to the ship from the flea market at Rio Quale. The taxi wanted $10 U.S. and would not budge or take pesos, thinking none of us knew any better because of the destination. We walked away, but the next two taxis wanted the same dollars in U.S. and got quite belligerent when we argued. Rip off tourist. I personally bus it if I can and avoid taking a taxi because every ride to the same place is a hassle over the price. Welcome, Uber. Okay, look at that. All right, another one. Okay, now my buddy David Ostlin writes, Carry with you a zone map of the current rates. Rates recently changed, by the way. Says, uh, don't negotiate with a taxi when you get in. Know where you're going and how much it costs. Make sure you have exact change. This is a good tip. To pay according to the zone that you're going to and give the driver that amount and tip if you feel that you need to do that. Don't ask questions. Don't negotiate. Get in. Get out. Pay the rate. If they fight, take a photo of the cab number and show them the rate map. Done. They'll leave mad, but nobody got ripped off or stiffed. Recently, I... Wow, look. Sounds like I'm going through puberty again here. Sorry, guys. Recently... I had to go to the airport, which is 150 pesos from where I stay. He, uh, Where he stays, he stays in El Cerro. Anyway, it's a scam, but I deal with it, he says. I made the mistake of only having a 500 peso note on me, and I asked the driver if he had change for 500 and confirmed the rate was 150. I gave him the 500, and he gave me 200 back, keeping an extra 150. He said that it took him longer than expected, and I said that we had agreed on the price. I tried to reach for my 150, and he pulled it away. 
I walked around to the driver door and sat in the driver's seat. He threw the $150 on the curb. Later, I realized that it was a driver who had pulled this on me before. I won't forget his face the next time. <laughs> okay, wow, you sat in his seat. God, David, you're, you're, you're a crazy dude. All right, now, I'm not sure if David's going to welcome Uber or not, by, by the way. I mean, it sounds like, well, maybe he will. I have, an, uh, I have an interview, by the way, with Dave. Uh, he's the man in charge of Chef's Pass, Puerto Vallarta. And you can hear him talk about his ties to Puerto Vallarta in an earlier episode of this podcast. So you might want to listen and hear David uh, talk about his, his Vallarta adventures. All right. My buddy Connie writes, will only use the taxis in PV. Love them. The one night we had an older guy, and he sang for us on the trip. What an amazing voice. Another time in the evening, the driver said, Such a beautiful evening. Let me take you to a beautiful spot to see the lights of the city. This is why we love PV and the people and the taxi drivers. They are the best. Never a bad experience. <laughs> wow, Connie. Now that's a great experience. See, some, sometimes you run into the best taxi drivers, and sometimes not so bueno. Anyway, I don't know if I'd let some guy go drive me to some strange place, Connie, so you're very brave. But I'm, I'm guessing, Connie, that you got something going for you there because someone's singing to you and someone else is taking you to a beautiful spot late at night. Hmm. All right, I won't go there. Uh, and then we have Bill. Bill writes, been going to PV for years, no bad experience with cabs, just never agreed with the prices from the airport. Now, we talk about that in another episode, why the prices are what they are from the airport. And you can get that uh, in, I think it's episode three, um, arriving at the airport. So check that out. Anyway, I also talked with my friend Eduardo. He is um, my photographer here in Puerto Vallarta. And he says that the guys that he hangs out with, with the technology, are really looking forward to Uber. And the taxi drivers and their families, they are not happy at all. Well, we're going to see as this saga continues. Let me say this one thing, though. I understand both sides, but for you first-timers out there, I don't want this discussion to make you fearful of taking cabs. I need to tell you that the taxis are safe, and if you follow the rules that David was talking about, you're going to be okay. Uh, if you prefer to use Uber, stay tuned. I'll keep you posted on how things are going along and how the taxi unions are reacting. But today is the day that Uber came to Puerto Vallarta. Okay, let's get on with the show. My first interview is with Mario Rosette, and he is the watchmaker on the bridge, I call him. Uh, I'm intrigued by Mario because Mario does what I used to do for like 35 years of my life. Now, I, like many other real estate agents, had a career before real estate, and that career was in the jewelry business. I was in, I was in the business. It was a family business for 36 years of my life. I actually am a gemologist, and I'm a jewelry designer by trade, and I used to work the bench and certainly uh, worked on a lot, thousands and thousands and thousands of watches. I used to change batteries and watches every day when I was in the, the jewelry business, from Cartier's and Movado's to Seiko's and Timex watches. I did all that stuff. So naturally, I was attracted to Mario. I, you know, Whenever I see a jewelry store, it's like a busman's holiday for me. I stop. And uh, anyway, he's been in the same spot on the bridge on the northbound 200 that's in Sergentes, uh, just on the south side of the bridge. He sits on a stool with a sign, and the sign basically talks about his services, what he does. So let's go to the bridge over the Rio Quale and meet Mario Rosette, the watchmaker with the greatest digs. All right, here we are. 
Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, and I'm on the I'm on a bridge. I'm on the street in front of a watchmaker, and this watchmaker has been here a long time. We'll talk about that. Uh, ¿Cómo está? What's your name? Hola, mucho gusto, Mario. Mario, and Mario is the watchmaker. He is uh, located well. ¿Qué es su locación? Ah, oh, es mi locación es un de reparación de relojes. Estoy sobre el puente de la calle Insurgentes, a un, por el lado del río Cuale. A los lados hay restaurantes y es mi ubicación. Okay, so we're right on the side of the river Cuale. There's a couple of restaurants around here on either side, and we're just right on the bridge. Now, this is there's two bridges that go over the river Quale that have uh, cars going over them, and one of them is going out of town, and the other one's going in town. Well, this one, I should say, uh, this one is heading northbound. This is the northbound one. So, all right, so uh, what do you do here? You, uh, you uh, change watch batteries, you size watch bands? Oh, yeah, me, there's a fix of watches, the every, uh, the battery, the bands, uh, uh, every, every. Okay, so uh, so someone is on vacation, they need to uh, have a battery changed in their watch because they always leave just when their battery dies, right? Siempre vienen a vacación y las pilas son muertos cuando vienen. So, todo bien, todo, todo el tiempo. Este, ¿Cuánto va a costar a uh, cambiar una pila, una battery? Ok, el cambio de una pila son de 50 pesos, 50 pesos. En uh, the de bands, uh, this is 40 pesos. A uh, mí de, de repair de washes, de, um, you, this is different de, de cleaner. Uh, this is 200 pesos, every. Ok, pues, uh, when you say clean the watch, when you, cuando dice que el, uh, limpiar el, el reloj, pues interior o exterior? Interior. Bueno, pues then you're a relojador, right? You're a real watchmaker, right? Yes, es 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 de clean de de you matching de de change de matching every. All right, pues oil you usa oil y todo, right? Sí, todo, todo, todo lo que el reloj necesite a uh, cambiar, limpiar, a uh, poner a máquina nueva. Wow, so that's pretty cool for like. 200 pesos, 200 pesos. Yeah, 200 pesos de 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 chain de cleaner y de you de, de chain de matching. This is 300 300 50 pesos. All right, so like 200 pesos is like it's like 10 dollars. It's like 12 dollars. 350 pesos is about 18 dollars. So you know that's pretty cool. All right, so once again he's changing batteries here. Did you say 40 para un pila? Sí, 40 or 50 pesos. 50. Okay, so like. You know, $2.50 to change a battery. So, really cool. Uh, he's here from, uh, looks like, ¿qué son sus horas? Me every day here, the 10 a 5. I see, every day. Okay. Uh, cerrado, uh, you're, you're closed on Sunday, yeah? Yeah, this is Sunday, this uh, cerrado. Okay, pero, well, okay, so six days a week, you guys, Monday through Saturday. When your battery dies and you need it changed, this young man's going to do it for you. How many years you've been here? ¿Cuántos años aquí? Ah, uh, 22 años tengo aquí ubicado en el puente. Eh, por mucho tiempo he dado servicio a mucha gente que viene de vacaciones, a uh, americanos, eh, canadienses, every, every people. Okay, so he's been here for like over 21 years and he's been, you know, repairing watches even longer. Thank you so much for coming on my program. We'll uh, we'll make sure that my my people go and see you when they need something. No, thank you for you. Uh, cuando quieran venir, aquí me encuentran. Estoy para servirles. Mi nombre es Mario Rosete. Thanks, Mario. Muchísimas gracias. Okay, gracias for you. Okay, now that was a lot of Spanish, you guys. I'm sorry if you don't understand Spanish, but I'm going to... What he said in a nutshell is this. For 50 pesos, which is about $2.75 U.S., he'll change out your dead watch battery. Uh, if you lose the pin out of your watch band, um, and, you know, the band's falling off, or if you want your watch band sized to fit your arm, let's say you've got a new watch, or maybe you've got a watch that's never fit you right, 
for 40 pesos or for about two dollars and fifty two eh, about two twenty five US uh he can he can size that watch band for you. Uh if you have a watch movement that's not working, he'll change out your old quartz movement with a new one for what it sounds like between two hundred and fifty and three hundred and fifty pesos, which in US dollars is between fourteen and twenty dollars US. And he can clean your mechanical watch and oil it for about the same price, um, for the three fifty, for about twenty dollars. Now I have Mario's information, and I have his picture in my show notes, along with the directions on how to find him. Remember, it's Murphy's Law. When you go on vacation, your watch battery is going to die. Guaranteed. You know it. It's happened to you. I can see you nodding right now. Anyway, go see Mario and tell him that you heard him on the show, and he's going to get a kick out of that for sure. My next interview is with a really interesting guy. His name is Adalberto Garcia Perez. And Adalberto is the owner of one of my favorite restaurants, Mi Cafe, Cafe in Delhi, in the Emiliano Zapata neighborhood in Puerto Vallarta. As I said, I just love Mi Cafe. I love the neighborhood it's in. It's real old-time Puerto Vallarta. It's it's mixed amongst remodeled Vallarta style homes and some beautiful, beautiful newer homes, and then some that look like they're fallen down, uh, who that really are in need of a facelift. Anyway, all they all these homes, they all seem to mix and exist seemingly here. They're it's it's beautiful. Anyway, on the corner of Naranjo and Francisco Madera, about seven blocks from the beach, so it's up in the neighborhoods is this place, um, Mi Cafe. And Mi Cafe is not a tiny place. It's got a pretty good-sized storefront, but for some reason, it's just not easy to see. I mean, you could be standing in front of it and not see it. The restaurant, though, has... I like it because it has a really good vibe. It's It's all open, and it's comfortable seating, and there's usually some jazz music or some light music softly playing in the background. And it's just a nice place to have a coffee or a, a meal, a snack, and and some great sandwiches there. I mean, now, they make uh, a great lunch, but what I really like there is their French toast. This French toast is... You don't even really need to put syrup on it. It's so sweet. It's like a cinnamon roll. It tastes like a, it just tastes like a cinnamon roll. It's so darn good. I'm just I'm just drooling thinking about it, just thinking about it right now. Uh, in an earlier episode of the show, when I was interviewing Gary Beck from uh, the uh, uh, the restaurant guide, uh, Vallarta restaurant guide, he mentioned me cafe as one of his top restaurants for lunch. So, a recommendation from Gary Beck is a pretty good recommendation. And, of course, I agreed with him. I'd never had lunch there, just breakfast. So, let's go to Mi Cafe in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, and talk with Adalberto Garcia Perez. I am so lucky to be sitting here with Adalberto Garcia Perez, of Mi Cafe, restaurant here in beautiful Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Thanks for allowing me to introduce you to my listeners. Oh, thank you, Barry. Thank you. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Now, uh, where are you from? Are you from Puerto Vallarta? Yeah, I was born and raised here in Puerto Vallarta. Okay. 54 years ago. 54 years ago. Oh, That's right. All right. You're younger than me. <laughs> All right. Well, See? I can tell by looking at you. And, of course, you live in paradise. So, you yeah. know, the years don't aren't so rough on you as they are on me. Not at all. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. About me? Yeah. Well, I grew up in a family in the restaurant, into the restaurant business. My Uncle Chico, he, uh, uh, he was a, a, a restauranteur. Uh, he used to have these restaurants, Chico's Paradise. Oh, really? Senor Chico's. And I worked with him. When I was uh, 16, 17 years old, I started working at Chico's Paradise. Okay. So um, um, my aunt, Rosalinda, Linda, she uh, and uh, her late uh, uh, husband, Guy Dickey, they uh, 
they built Lapa Lapa in, back in 58. Wow. 58, 59. So um, I've been in the restaurant business ever since I remember. Yeah, no and, kidding. Yeah, and uh, I used to get out of a school, uh, talking junior high, I was uh, r- around 11 years old, and we would run to the beach, to Lapa Lapa, and yes, offer chairs, beach chairs to the, uh, to the gringos, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Just for tips. Right. And that was like fun. But then uh, we, we started working inside, uh, cleaning the ashtrays and cleaning tables, just uh, doing simple stuff. Right. And that's how it started, basically, into, into this kind of business, this restaurant. So that's how you were introduced to the restaurant biz. I mean, you were born into it. Alberto. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Oh, yeah, definitely, yeah. Wow, okay. So um, because this is an audio program, I'm going to take pictures of your place. Okay. But... Describe your restaurant to my listeners. Okay. Uh, what we try to do here is uh, we try to keep it simple. I, I believe that, that uh, uh, a place that uh, you would want to come and he- eat or just hang out and, and do some work with your lab, uh, laptop, um, uh, should be comfortable, should be clean, uh, not too... Um, uh, Heavy on, on, on decoration, not too heavy on, I don't know. Uh, uh, not too uh, fluffy. No, not like that. <laughs> and it's, it's basically the same with our food. We try to keep it simple. We try to keep it fresh. That's basically what we try to do. We, they, we consider the main, main ingredient for food, it should be that, fresh fresh ingredients. And, and that's basically the way we do it here. Okay. Yeah. yeah um, you know, I... Uh, when I first came to your uh, establishment, I found it on TripAdvisor. Of course, a lot of people do that. Uh-huh. And um, I sat down and I had uh, I had breakfast. I had your uh, your incredible French toast, which just blew my mind. Uh-huh. And uh, I was talking with Gary Beck in uh, an interview. Oh, several months back. Okay. And uh, I was asking him about you know his favorite restaurants, and I kind of you know. This is a very this is a very difficult question for him to answer because he's got a lot of people that are looking at him going, "Hey, how come you didn't say anything about my restaurant?" Mm. But when I asked him about lunch, he mentioned your restaurant. Okay. He mentioned Me Cafe, and I said, "Wow, I, I think about Me Cafe for for breakfast." So, for someone who's coming for lunch, yeah, what, what are they what are they getting what are they eating here? Well, uh, we get um, we have pretty good burgers, and we serve them on a on a bagel Parmesan bagel. Uh, I tried it with the uh, uh, um, brioche, and it didn't work out because uh, it, it, with the juices of the meat, the bread would tear apart and yeah. it would get soggy, and it, I didn't like it. So we tried it with the bagel, and it worked out pretty good. So uh, we I kept kept it like that. Mm-hmm. But uh, basically, the, the people like a lot the uh, goat cheese salad, which is really simple and fresh. I mean, it's got some strawberries with some uh, uh, pecans and. Uh, dry cranberries and uh, um, fresh mixed greens yeah, and wow. goat cheese. And the dressing is a dressing. It's a, it's a simple dressing, too. It's a um, honey mustard vinaigrette. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, they like to eat the tuna salad sandwich, which is, which is basically uh, an open sandwich with some tuna with mayo and, ma- and mustard and some uh, pickles and uh, capers. Uh, uh, it, 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 like I said, I mean, we try to keep it simple. We don't try to do something complicated. And that's because I believe that's the way food should be. It shouldn't be complicated. Yeah. And um, uh, basically, they, that's what they eat. they eat. They eat some sandwiches. We have some pretty good sandwiches. The they sandwich al patron, which is um, a roast beef sandwich on a chapata bread with some uh, goat cheese and bacon. Delicious. That's very good. Another one, it's with uh, a spinach, uh, fresh mozzarella with uh, uh, bacon and... Um, Avocado, that comes in a focaccia if you want, which is a bread with some olive oil and, and fresh rosemary. So uh, I, I guess uh, basically the food is like just like that. It, uh, and yeah, just like I said, presentation is really important to me. Yes. I just I, I just try to keep it colorful. Someone said sometime one time I met somebody and said, if you want to know if you're eating right, just put some color on your plate. <laughs> don't don't just leave it just one color. Don't just look at it. It's brown or it's just green it has, to, it has to have color and you'll know it's a balanced dish because you, you will get protein, you will get uh, 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 cereal, you will get some of the, all the stuff. So it, it works like that. 
avocado. I mean, you know, uh, but yeah, that's, that's basically what the people like to, to come and eat some lunch. And the other thing is we don't have time for either lunch or breakfast. We're open from 8 to 4. Mm-hmm. And we don't we don't say breakfast is closed at one. I mean that's just, that's I, my opinion. It's silly. I mean yeah. if you have a restaurant and you should serve food all day all day. I mean of course we're a small place. We're not La Palapa or we're not like a big place like that. I, I understand they have to change shift and they have to change uh, uh, people and all that. But, but here we try to keep it like that. You can have a burger at nine in the morning or you can have a chilaquiles at three in the afternoon, which is works for us. Yeah. Excellent. Good. So yeah. you can have breakfast or lunch anytime here anytime from, from 8 to 4. 8 to 4. Yeah. And, you know, in Puerto Vallarta, people roll out of bed kind of late. I noticed that. So, you know, you might be looking at breakfast at, at you know, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. That, it works for us, works for them. So, yeah. Okay, good. He, okay, let's talk about that because you are flexible. So let's say some people might have a... Um, Maybe an allergy to some sort of food. I mean, you you specialize your dish, right? You, yeah. Whatever you like. Yeah. Basically, what we try to do is, you know, right now a lot of people are vegan or, or uh, gluten free. Mm-hmm. They look for stuff like that. So uh, we don't really have dishes made uh, uh, in, on our menu in our menu, uh, especially like like that. I mean, right. like gluten free or or uh, a, a vegan dish. But what we do is we try to uh, uh, see what. Can they order from our menu? If, if we have salads, if we have, uh, I don't know. Like uh, uh, this morning was a lady that uh, she wouldn't eat. She was a vegan, and 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 then she said, "Okay, I can have some potato wedges, which are really good." Mm-hmm. I said, "Well, that, if that works for you, that then we'll say you just potato wedges with, with some uh, <laughs> chipotle dressing on the side." So, oh, good. That well, works. Okay. Yeah. So look, you accommodate people. Well, you yeah. know, people come in with with their with their dietary needs, and it's good to know that you can help them out. Oh yeah. Um, what do you like most about your restaurant here? Uh, I'm a quiet person, and I don't really like crowds. I like my, my, my location. I like it because we are not in the beaten path. We are not in, in, the, in, the, in the area where everybody's walking around. Yeah. And, and for me, it works. Of course, if, if you're talking a business, maybe it's not that great of a business, but... It works for me because I don't really like crowds. I don't like it when it, 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 it's like people waiting online. I don't like it. I, I'm, I, I'm, right. I'm, I'm trying to be honest here. So I'd rather have a flow uh, with, with the uh, customers, the people walking in, walking out, walking in, walking out, and just like that. And um, I know myself, and I'm not a very social person. I mean, the people might, might have the wrong impression when they first see me or meet me because I'm not I don't smile often and, and I'm like that yeah. but um, uh, I like I like to keep it just like that I like to keep it uh, 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 with enough people to maintain a business and to have it nice but I like to have everything under control yes. and when, when there's a lot of people because we only have 30 seats and when there's a lot of people like Mother's Day oh yeah uh, that was kind of crazy well, that can be very crazy yeah, then then it's it's a little bit uh, uh, tough, but I understand it. I, I understand some days are going to be like that, and then we'll, we'll, what we do here, we'll just go like, okay, let's just work the best we can, give the people. Our dishes should be, that, that's what I tell my, my, my cooks. I, I tell them, every dish that you, that you serve and you prepare should be worthy of a picture because people should, should know that no matter how busy you are, the, the dish should be served exactly the same as if there was a, a one person in the restaurant. And that's one of the things that I, I would try to keep it like that I'm all the time. Because in a lot of places, that's what, that's what fails. That's what happens right. sometimes. When you go and there's nobody there, everybody thinks it's right, and then when you go and it's packed, then things are like not the same. And so we, we try to do it like that. I have some uh, uh, photographs of my dishes on Facebook and mm-hmm. on Instagram. Good. And um, a lot of people come and they, they show me the picture and say, I want this. <laughs> exactly the way that it looks right here. They say, so we said, that's the way you're going to get it. you got to do that's it. That's the way you're going to get it. Because yeah. a lot of people said, you know how it is. You, you go to McDonald's or one of those places and you see the picture and you say to the poker, oh, right. it's juicy. And, 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 and what you get? <laughs> What's this? I mean, this is not what I ordered. That's, that's not me. what I'm seeing there. Yeah. So... Basically, we'll try to do it like that. Yeah. Okay. Understood. Yep. Um, all right. So, you're, you, you like the fact that you are 
kind of quiet and tucked away in a neighborhood, and that's where you are. You are tucked up in a neighborhood. Uh-huh. Um, how can people find your place when we're all we're tucked up here? Give, give them an idea how, how to get here. Okay, it's, it's, it's a little bit uh, difficult for pe- people who have never been in Vallarta, especially. Um, see, um, the, the people that live around here in this, in this area, this, uh, uh, they call it uh, the old Vallarta. Because mm-hmm. um, from all the Saltas, all the way to uh, 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 the river, up there, to, up to the river, uh, there's a big community now of, of uh, uh, Americans and Canadians, retired Americans and Canadians. And a lot of them own places now or they rent for six months or for five months. So with them, it's easy once they find me. A lot of Correct. people say, okay, it's hard to find you because you're not, in, like I said, you're not up there where the, the streets are nice to find and everybody's walking around. Right. But... Um, uh, I would say that if you were walking on the main street, which is Insurgentes, that's the, that's the, the, the street where the road comes... Uh, uh, Up into town. Yeah. Or, yeah. Okay, you got to come inland four blocks on Francisco y Madero the Street, mm-hmm. which is the main street, too, because this is the one to take you out. Ah, okay. That's basically the way it is. I mean, the, the Lázaro Cárdenas is up there. Right. That one goes in, and then you, you turn uh, around, and this one takes you out. Takes you out, down. Yeah, and that's how you do it in, th- in this area. If you are on the other side of, the t- of town, then if you are driving to the tunnel, once you get out of the, the we call it a small tunnel because that's the, the, the large one, that, that, that's the big one. Okay, once you get out of a, the small tunnel, you just take a right on the first corner. And you it'll take it two blocks down, it'll be right there. Me, right Naranjo there. Street, that would be Naranjo Street. So we're in Madero and Naranjo. So that's how I would I would say it. Okay. okay. All right. Well you got it both ways. You gotta you got us coming both ways, which is good. Oh, yeah. And and you're right, when you come here you'll remember where to find it. And yeah. it's a cute neighborhood. Um, you know, you've got older ho- houses here, you've got the uh, right up against newer houses and it's uh, it's an interesting mix over here. Yep. Um all right. What kind of ad- what kind of advice other besides uh, telling a first time visitor to come visit Mi Cafe would you give to a first time visitor who was coming to Vallarta? What would you What would you tell them? Well, in my opinion, a lot of people see. We have what what makes Vallarta different um, from other places in in Mexico let's say Los Cabos Cancun um, Acapulco it's unfortunately it's going yeah. through rough times yeah um, what makes it different it's because we we actually have a small town it, it, it's it's still in a way it's still a fisherman village so uh, what I would say to people is try to see try to find the local Customs and the local uh, um, uh, traditions, not just hang out in the hotel and then go to a restaurant and then go back to the hotel and spend a night there. Explore, go to Yalapa, go to Las Animas, go to Quimixto, uh I don't know, uh, uh, rent a jeep or rent a car and then drive into the uh, mountains up to Chico's Paradise or to uh, El Tuito, which is a little bit farther. That's where my family actually was was uh, come came from. My, uh-huh. my grandmother and my grandfather. Uh, but um, try to do things uh, in a different way. If you if you want to, of course, I know I understand people. Sometimes the people is not daring or they are not adventurous, and, and I understand that. But uh, uh, try to eat pozole the way we eat it. Pozole, you know, it's uh, it, normally uh, these places are like a fonda, yeah. like a, like a like a, a family house, and then then they, they they set up some four or five tables, and then that's where they serve you some tostadas and gorditas and pozole. And, and and all this food that we actually normally eat when well, not every day, but uh, <laughs> we go there once a week, once a month, yeah. and we eat something like that. So I would say to the people that uh, come comes to Vallarta for the first time, uh, t- try to find out what do we locals do in a, in a basic day. I mean, mm-hmm. we go to the beach uh, and bring some ceviche, and we just eat it there. We just bring our chairs and. We do t- simple stuff just like that, and you bring your uh, ice cooler with some soft drinks or beer or whatever you want, and that's basically the way things uh, work for us. We're very lucky to live in this paradise, like you said, because everything is so close. I mean, you don't really 
you, a car is fine, but you don't really need a car. You can just take a bus to Miss Maloya or to La Boca or just one of those beaches around here. Mm -hmm. And it'll, you'll be there in 10 minutes, 15 minutes, less than that. Uh, like I said, if you go to La Boca, take a boat to Las Animas or to Yalapa and spend a day there. Spend a night if you want. I mean, there's some uh, yeah. small uh, hotels there, uh, uh, bed and breakfast hotels and places like that. So, yeah, that's basically what I would say to tell people. To, uh, so get out, do something, get out of your all-inclusives if you're stuck in one, and that's basically hit it, the yeah. road. Get over here to town. Yeah. See what's happening and see what and, and live like Mexicans live that's a little bit, right? Yeah. Yep. Come and enjoy the culture. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Um, all right. I'm not going to ask you about any uh, lunchtime restaurants. I'm going to ask you about a dinner restaurant. I always ask people about food. So, uh, what kind of uh, what kind of restaurant do you? What, I'll give you a couple couple restaurants you like for dinner. Couple restaurants I like for dinner. Yeah. Well, of course, La Palapa. That's well, my yeah, uncle's place. I've and, say that. La Palapa and El Dorado now. Uh, um, but now they're ser they're serving the Vista Grill menu down at, at El, El Dorado, Dorado yeah, right now, aren't yeah, they? Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, uh, I like to go. I like. Uh, the, the Sonora Prime Girl, I like steaks, ah. but that's a, that's because it, it, the ambience, the atmosphere of the place is really nice. I mean, it's a young, it kind of hipster place, yeah. And 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 it's it's nice. I mean, the food is really good. Uh, it's not it's not cheap though. I mean, it's no. it's pricey, but you know, you're paying for what you're getting. So, sure. So it, it's it works like that. Yeah, compared to the states, let me tell you, you know, it's a great deal. Yeah. Um, so. Um, um, Café de Artistas, I like to go there because I know everybody. Uh -huh. So I, they, they actually uh, uh, serve me or they, 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 they come and around. And I know the manager. I know some waiters. I know a lot of, body, and a lot of people there. So uh, they, uh, they, they treat me really nice. So they, I like that. Yeah, and they then, special care. Yeah. Uh, the food is not – I mean, it, it's great. It's, they have great food. A lot of people don't agree with me. It's a – you know, gourmet places. They say the food's too too small. The place, the place, <laughs> yeah. the plates, the, the dishes. Yeah. I, I say, well, you know, fine dining is like that because you're supposed to do five course menu, not yeah. not just two course menu, but normally you would do in a different place. So uh, that's basically it. But um, I like Cafe de Artis. I like the uh, Sonora Prime. I like La Palapa and, and El Dorado. The atmosphere at La Palapa and El Dorado. It's uh, Nothing compares to that. No. Being in, on the beach with your toes in the sand, and, and the breeze of the ocean is right there. Yeah, the sunset, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's romantic Puerto oh, Vallarta. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I like it. Excellent. Um, well, all right. Uh, why don't you tell my listeners once again uh, the address here and uh, how they can get a hold of you. Do you have an uh, online presence, uh, Facebook or anything like that? Uh, yeah, well, we are on Francisco Madero and Naranjo Street. If you are uh, uh, walking around this area of town, from the old bridge, we call it the old bridge, which mm -hmm. is this one, from the old bridge you just, you, you're going to be in Insurgentes Street. That, that's yes. the same uh, uh, street as the, as the bridge. So once you get to Insurgentes, you just, just find Francisco Madero and then just walk four blocks in. Inland, right. Away from the ocean, yeah, guys. Away from the ocean, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we, uh, we have an Instagram uh, uh, where uh, Mi Cafe PV on Instagram okay. and uh, Mi Cafe Coffee Shop on Facebook. I don't have a web page. Okay. Well, you, um, you are also, you can find them on, on TripAdvisor. There are, uh, oh, yeah, TripAdvisor, yeah, yeah. there, you're there as well. Uh-huh. Um, well, are you planning on uh, being open all season? Are you open all year round, or do you close uh, at all during the year? No, we stay open all, all the year round. Yeah. Okay, so if you're here and you know your favorite place is closed, you know you know where to come and eat. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, I want to thank you so much for taking the time and for letting me introduce you, Alberto Garcia Perez, to my listeners. Uh, thank you very much, Barry. Anytime. Well, thank you, Adalberto. This guy is the real deal. And I got to tell you, he is the hardest working restaurant owner I know. I mean, he is real hands-on. He's, he's right there. He, as you said, he's quiet. He's a private guy. But don't let that fool you. He's passionate about what he does. And his approach is a little different than some restaurants who shower you with 
compliments and this and that. And, you know, he lets his food speak for itself. So check out Me Cafe. I have all the links as well as directions to the restaurant right in my show notes. And let me know if you agree with me and Gary that this is just a great place for breakfast or lunch or just coffee. Again, check out my show notes for episode 25, and uh, I'll have the links for Me Cafe, Uber, and the pictures and directions to Mario, the watchmaker, on the bridge right there in those show notes. Well, that should do it for this week's episode of the Puerto Vallarta Travel Show. Next week, stay tuned for more on-the-ground reports from Puerto Vallarta and other surprises, Puerto Vallarta travel tips and ideas and more. So until then, just remember that this is an interactive show where I depend on your questions and suggestions about all things Puerto Vallarta. If you think of something that I should be talking about, please reach out to me by clicking on the Contact Us tab and sending us your message. And remember, if you're considering booking any type of tour while you're in Puerto Vallarta, you must go to vallartainfo.com, that's JR's website, and reserve your tour through him right from his website. Remember the value for value proposition I talk about? It's his his experience and his on-the-ground knowledge of everything Puerto Vallarta in exchange for your making a purchase of a tour that you do anyway. You're just doing it through him as a way of saying thank you. Thanks, JR, for being a power guy. It costs no more than if you were going to use someone else. So just do it, really. And when you do take one of those tours, email me about your experiences. Maybe you can come on board and share with others what you liked or didn't like about that tour. Again, contact me by clicking on the Contact Us tab and sending off a message. And once again, if you like this podcast, please take some time and subscribe and give me a good review on iTunes if you would. That way we can get the word out to more and more people about the magic of this place, Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. So, thanks to Adalberto Garcia Perez. Check out the links to Mi Cafe at www.puertovallartatravelshow.com, episode number 25. And thanks, Mario, the watchmaker on the bridge. And thanks to all of you for listening all the way through this episode of the Puerto Vallarta Travel Show. This is Barry Kessler signing off with a wish for all of you to slow down, be kind, and live the Vallarta lifestyle. Nos vemos, amigos. Yeah, yeah.